Oh, some people woke up to some news that had them celebrating all day. Mm -hmm. For some people out there, today is a very special day. Some people said, I thought this day would never come. <laughs> well, it comes for everyone. It comes for everyone, but not soon enough. <laughs> and also, let me just say this, man. I should have known something was up. You know, today is technically my day off. I had plans. Mm -hmm. I had things I wanted to do. But a certain O.J. Simpson said, the hell you do. A certain one. A certain O.J. Simpson said, you know, your plans are my plans today because on your day off, I'm just going to decide to, I don't know, die. Mm -hmm. You know, every time I decide to, like, take a day off, somebody has to always infringe on my time by dying. Selfish. It's selfish, man. People, I mean, they, an asshole to the very end. <laughs> he was good at it. The you man, gotta give him that. The man is killing my time. All right? <laughs> He's just a, a true villain to the end. If it ain't cartoons, it's someone who acts like a cartoon. Oh, damn, boy. I had to. I had, I had things I wanted to do. But I said, you know what? Even I, deep down inside, oh, what am I talking about? I'm, I, I did cartwheels today. <laughs> I yeah, ran, you were that I, happy. I ran all around this house. I had sparklers <laughs> in my hands and everything. I, like many people out there, I am not a fan of O.J. Simpson. At one time I was, and that's what we're going to talk about. O.J. Simpson, dead at 76, and... Some people are saying couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. <laughs> Prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is what this man died from. Uh, hey, look, if the, justice sit, if the justice system couldn't get him, then, you know, let life do the job. His asshole got him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> they, how appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> he was an asshole, and then his, how ironic that his asshole killed him. Yeah, beautiful. It's like poetry. It rhymes. It really is. It really is. I like it. Write that book. <laughs> asshole to asshole. The O.J. Simpson story. If I was an asshole. Yes. This is how I'd die. This By my asshole. Yeah. Yeah, this man right here. I'm, I'm like everybody else out there, the majority of people. I'm not a big fan of uh, O.J. Simpson, but at one time in my life, I'm old enough to have, you know, have, have lived to that moment where O.J. was a hero. Yeah, I miss that. He was always, like, kind of just a jerk, but, like, you know, growing up watching movies, there were times where it's like, he, he kind of was like a Mel Gibson person, where it's like, let me ignore that stuff while I'm watching this, but fuck this guy. Well, yeah, you know, it's like, a, you, you grew up in that time where, you know, you saw the goofy OJ and the... The I don't know the the, the pre murder OJ, and then <laughs> yeah. you grew up in that time where you know you had uh, you know the the murderer, uh, you know some people say the alleged murderer OJ, but yeah you grew up with that image, mm -hmm. but I grew up at a different time. Uh, yeah, you know it, it was funny because uh, a lot of people saw this coming, and some people didn't. I didn't know that the man was already kind of frail. And was already walking around, you know, using a cane. And not the OJ that we've seen because, I mean, listen, say what you will. Again, I don't like OJ. And, it's, and, and everybody knows OJ was on trial for the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson. And, uh, and uh, also, uh, uh, what was it, uh, uh, Goldman? Ron oh, Goldman. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there were so, other people involved. Yeah, so a lot of people forget that he killed two people. <laughs> Not just Nicole Brown Simpson, but he killed Ron Goldman. Yeah, he's a two-for-one special, that guy. Yeah, there was, uh, so there was, I don't know, there's some love triangle going on, jealousy involved. I mean, this, you know, this man was a true crime story. Uh, he went in and killed both of them in what they say was a, a fit of jealousy and was acquitted for it. So say what you will about O.J. Simpson. I mean... A lot of people hated this, but you know he looked he looked great for his age, yeah. even as he was getting into his sixties and seventies. You know he was he looked amazing for his age, which pissed a lot of people off because they're like, why does this guy deserve all of this? Why does this guy deserve to like be healthy? Why does this guy deserve to actually you know be blessed still with his looks? And he gets to keep his money. He gets to retire and sit back. And I know this man was. Uh, I know he was getting all kind of women. I know that this guy was enjoying life. I know he still had money that he that you know that he was uh, that that he that 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 he was resting on. You know that he he retired in Vegas. Yeah, I was gonna say I thought he lived in Vegas. Yeah. 
So you yeah. know that he was up to no good. Yeah. Now, there was a civil case against him where the families, they came in and they 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 had a, a – so they couldn't get him on murder. So – you know, they just they 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 got him where they try to get people that they can't get him with uh, with murder. They they attacked his bank account, and so they they were supposed to receive some money, some damages, you know, for the, for you know the, where he was found in his civil case to be guilty, and he was supposed to owe the family uh, the families some money. But he fled California. <laughs> I don't th- I don't even know if he really paid anything. If he did pay, he paid very little. This man was able to, I mean, you talk about getting away with murder, man, and getting away with all kind of crimes. That he, he, These families, they'll never get the money that he owed, he owed them millions. They'll, they'll, they'll never get that money. They'll never get that money, and he got away with that too in a way. Now, we'll talk about some things that he did not get away with, but some people just say it's just agitating because all the things that he did have to serve time for, it still didn't. It, it was nowhere near the uh, the punishment he should have received for allegedly killing two people. Yeah, he was at that status of celebrity where, like, for a lot of people, he was considered above the law. Yeah. Also, folks, it's it, you know the, the the whole thing with his death, the whole thing with these you know alleged murders. It's a very complicated thing, and it divided the nation. And we'll talk about that too, because I, I it was a. It was a very uncomfortable period for a lot of people, and we'll, in, including myself, and we'll talk about that. But yeah, you know, looking at how he was, man, you know, even when he was in, on trial and, you know, he was dressed in the county blues and all this kind of stuff, man, he was still he still looked great for his age. Mm-hmm. And then you see these, uh, these you see these images right here, and you know, it, it, kind of, it just kind of crept on up on people because he did, you know, he. Um, he actually uh, uh, was to the end was telling people or near the end was still telling people I'm okay. People heard about his cancer. Uh, people had heard that he was sick, but he was still out there. And a lot of people believe, including myself, that he was just kind of holding back and not really telling people what was really going on. But I think you sent me this video here. Uh, you know, the final video. Yeah. Dealing with some issues, uh, but hey, I think I'm just about over it, and I'll be. In- I'm back on that golf course, hopefully in a couple of weeks. So a lot of people thought that he was lying. He was just telling people what, you know, what he wanted them to hear. Um, in fact, I got some moments, uh, his final moments. That was him on camera talking to everybody, but there was other final moments of him caught on camera, like right here, man. That's, you know, you know he, oh, he looked real bad. Man. Oh, my God. Oh, he looked terrible. Yeah, he looked like a dummy the way that he lived. <laughs> I remember being around. What? When did all this kick off, y'all? I forgot. It was 90, June 94. Man, this was huge news. And, and, and the way that people first caught wind of it, you know, it was the, the Bronco chase. Mm-hmm. The white Bronco and the police yeah. were chasing it, and people were just kind of like, what the hell is going on? And, and people didn't even, at first, some people didn't even know it was OJ. Yeah, the people, infamous car chase. Yeah, the infamous car chase. They were talking about, what, you know, what celebrities in that fucking car, man? Who are they chasing down? And then finally people figured out it was OJ, and they're like, oh, shit, what did OJ do? The, the now infamous the white Bronco, man. I bet it's still their bestseller. You know what? Uh, it's That Bronco was a collector's item. I think a guy. Oh yeah. Yeah, a guy actually bought that Bronco, man. They, I, I think some articles came out with even talked to the guy. Yeah. Just I, recently, people buy killers cars. I know the lead singer of Corn has like a couple cars that are owned by that were like killers. Really? So, yeah, it's a weird. Thing yeah. To want, yeah. Though. So yeah, apparently people can hear the sound. I can't hear it on my end because it's coming through one channel. But uh, a lot of people, I remember when this happened, man. Every you know, that's how big OJ was, man. When they figured out that OJ was in that was in that Bronco, everybody stopped. Everybody cut on the news. Everybody wanted to see where this car chase would lead to. I mean, it was crazy. It might be hard for people out there to put this in context. You know, it might be hard for you to realize why this was so big. But listen, this is America, y'all. I mean, imagine how big football is right now. Yeah. You know. Uh, football is huge right now. Football is its, it's own religion. It's, I mean, I told y'all, man, people here in Texas, people, they, they tell you, fuck Jesus, football is yeah, my church and religion. It's time for kickoff. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> gotta exactly. Get out of here. Exactly. We, they, they, I don't care how religious you are. Now, but uh, back then, you know, football was probably not as big as it is now, but it was still huge. Oh, yeah. But the one thing that was, that was big, like if you became like a, 
a football superstar. That's how big football was at the time that everybody knew who you were. You, and he's you, also one of the most famous black athletes of all time. Yes. So he played for the Buffalo Bills, number 36, man. And, you know, and I, I, the thing with OJ is that OJ was handsome. You know, he was charismatic. And as you can see, I mean, and people used to, <laughs> I hate to say this, but people, even white people who did not black people, they would say, damn. That's a handsome ass black man. <laughs> you mean who didn't like black people? Who didn't, that, is, yeah, who oh, did not like black people. Oh, okay. No, black the white people who did not like black people, they would stop it. Even they had to say, God damn, that's a handsome black man. He's got that chin. He's got that Chad chin. <laughs> he's got that chin. He's got those uh those hot cheekbones and everything. <laughs> the man was, yeah, he was I mean, he he was he wasn't just an athletic superstar, he was a superstar. Oh yeah. Whether you liked um, sports or not, you knew who OJ was. Mm -hmm. And you for some reason you liked him. Because O.J. was a natural in front of the camera. When they put O.J. in a commercial, oh, now you see actors today, you know, when they put, I mean, I'm sorry, not actors, they're athletes. You see football players. They put them in commercials, they put them in, in movies, and they say every line like this. There's some infamous footage of some basketball players in a video game who were like, man, I was out there on the court. Why didn't you pass me the ball? You were fucking around. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> imagine Michael Jordan. You know, that trying to act with Bugs Bunny. Hey, what's going on here? <laughs> Let's play some basketball. You know, every time they, you know when an athlete can't act, because they look at the camera and they, every, all their emotions just go out their face and the only thing <laughs> moving is their mouth because they're really trying to concentrate on them words. Now, I'm kind of racist with that, too. Why they yeah, got to talk, like talk like that? Why they got to talk like that? I swear that's how the guy sounds in that video if you find that, it. There you go. Yeah. Uh, a lot of athletes, needless to say, they're big draws, uh, you know, to whatever product they're selling. They're big draws even if you put them in a movie, but they cannot carry those lines for shit. They can carry a ball, but they can't carry the fucking word to, to, to save their life. O.J. Simpson, that dude, he was, he was a natural. And you can see these commercials online, but uh, yeah, these were, he was the spokesperson. For Hertz at the time because he was so good in these commercials and so charismatic. Whether it's picking up or dropping off your Ford or other fine car, nobody has more to do it faster. Go, run, bitches, run! <laughs> Bunch of little blonde white girls, y'all better run. Y'all better hey, you better not yell at that man. Hertz, the superstar in you know it. Now that was a commercial where he his ass was running most of the time, so you uh so you didn't really get to see him speak a whole lot. But you could hear him. I was going to say his delivery was on point with those voiceovers. You're an actor, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, so you heard, you could even hear in his voice. Oh, yeah. That he knew what he was doing. Oh, yeah, that, that was top-notch stuff. So, I mean, the man's name is OJ. So it was only natural that, you know, it was only a matter of time mm -hmm. before they put his ass in an orange juice commercial. It's obvious. Yeah, it's way obvious. I mean, you know, if you got the money for OJ, that's a no-brain. You better get his ass up in this commercial. And <laughs> Minute Maid sitting there rubbing their hands. Yeah. So here well, we go. Funny thing is, this is some uh, orange juice I don't remember as a kid, man. <laughs> it's some orange juice I don't think is around anymore. Like, you would think it's Minute Maid uh, sunken or something like or that. Or even Tang or Tang some shit. Or, yeah, you remember Tang? Yeah. No, this is some... Some orange juice. I can't even see the name right. Here's some old off-brand orange juice that don't even exist anymore. I don't think. Uh, just like OJ. <laughs> but but, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but he talks more in this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow. I can see why this guy went on to be in movies later because he really he he can't act. His delivery's oh, yeah. great. His presence from the cameras there. His his charisma is just coming through. I mean, the man was made for the camera. Ready, OJ. Ready. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and this is tree sweet. The orange juice I grew up on. It's rich in natural. Tree sweet. I ain't never heard no fucking tree sweet of you. <laughs> no. Tree sweet. <laughs> tree sweet. That, that sounds so weird. It sounds like sap. Yo, I'm 52 years old. I ain't never heard no goddamn tree sweet before. I never heard of that. It's because you were running in the other room getting your cereal, not watching these damn commercials. Man, listen. I love commercials as a kid because commercials. You know, whenever there was a cereal that came on, mm -hmm. or an orange juice or something, you would beg your parents for it. <laughs> I don't remember this shit at all. I Tree need sweet. OJ's OJ. <laughs> and somehow, this old off-brand orange juice that no one's heard before got the biggest athletic celebrity out there, OJ. Energy. And the kids, they like to taste the tree sweet. 
because it's always naturally sweet. As sweet as an orange right from the tree, right? Yes, sir. You goddamn right. Yeah, right? <laughs> you ready for another lesson, boss? Oh. All right. That yeah. nasty frozen shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, that frozen concentrate. <laughs> yeah, it looks like... I'm going to tell you a little piss. secret, man. I used to... So when my mom wasn't around, because she never let me do this, she never let me eat things that weren't, that she figured weren't cooked the way she thought they should be made or <laughs> cooked or prepared or whatever. This is part of your cookie dough diet? Yeah, <laughs> man. So I had I used to sneak and get cookie dough because she, she, she used to lose her mind. Stop eating that dough. It's got raw eggs in it. It's going to make you sick. And I was like, yeah, bitch. <laughs> Whenever she left the room, I was like a drug addict. I'd get that cookie dough out. <laughs> Same thing with the... Uh, with the uh, uh, frozen orange juice, with frozen orange juice, I, now, we, now we never had tree sweet, but whatever frozen orange juice we had, when she wasn't around, uh, I would take the, 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 the lid off and I would get a spoon and eat it like it's a fudge sickle or, <laughs> or, 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 like or, or, or sorbet. popsicle. Yeah, 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 like old cheap sorbet, or like a crushed, pu crushed up popsicle. And then she would, I would get discovered because she'd be like, what the fucking orange juice? She'd say, you be eating that shit again. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have an orange around your mouth? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, he was, uh, oh, yeah, OJ was, uh, he was great, man. He I'm was sure if he hadn't gone to court, Minute Maid would have picked him up and we would have seen him until he died on the bottle of orange juice. Oh, yeah, he, man, he would have been doing move. I, I really believe this. He would have been, if he, you know, wasn't, you know, killing people, uh, he would have been doing more movies. He would have been, uh, he would have been, uh, uh he would have been, uh, uh, uh getting millions of views online. Oh, yeah, and you there know. was a time, I'm sure we're going to talk about it, where he was up for one of the biggest roles of all time. Yeah, yeah, man. No, uh, he he would have been in movies. He would have been doing shows. He would have had a podcast. He would have been, you know, he would have been, he would have been, he would have been, been in commercials. He would have been beloved by people still today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if he wasn't, you know, a murderer. And he technically, you know, he still was in the spotlight to some degree. I mean, he was on all types of programs, sort of. <laughs> Not by his will, but... Uh, and some by his will. <laughs> Thing is, to back this up, and you and I were talking about this, you found this out today, and I remember hearing about this back in the day. At one time, OJ was so... He was so big, a celebrity, that he was considered to be the Terminator. This is from uh, this is this is from uh, 2014, but this is from a long time ago when they were talking about this. O.J. Simpson almost played the Terminator, and that's from uh, Entertainment uh, Weekly right here. But that was that was news that was going around a lot. Now, of course, he was never the well shit, never the Terminator movie. Yeah, <laughs> in, in real life though. In, in real life, yeah, he terminated like a motherfucker. But he, um, yeah, that's how huge he was. You know, he he was destined to go on and start doing more movies. I kind of wish that he would have been the Terminator, because then that franchise wouldn't have gone to hell the way that it did. They would have stopped oh, it those still movies. Would have. It ain't <laughs> OJ wouldn't make no difference in that. That shit was stay. It was gonna still be shitty. Hey, I'll be back with vitamin C. Yeah, yeah. No, that shit was still gonna be terrible. OJ's, you know, he can. Hey, his his talent can only go so far. <laughs> uh, also, you were talking about this, and I brought this clip up because of you. Yeah, I mean, when I grew up taking acting classes, you know, they would talk about the physicality of things, and I had multiple acting teachers who would use O.J. as an example of someone who really understood you, physical bitch. comedy. I'm just thinking about this, O.J. going around killing white people in a movie, that would probably not be good. <laughs> That yeah. would have aged yeah, like that, milk instantly. That, that would have been. You would have had to ban those movies, man. With OJ walking around killing, trying to kill white women and little white kids. Out there, that was <laughs> killing white cops. <laughs> yeah. Not only was this man charismatic and, you know, uh, he played to the screen very well. But he also was a he was a great physical comedian. Yeah, he knew how to use his body and how to react to things. And that's what acting is. It's reacting. Kill him. I mean, that had great direction, too, and it's it's really well edited, but he did a lot there. Listen, there was enough time where he had to, you saw him performing the physical comedy right there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you had somebody who didn't have good timing, mm -hmm. that wouldn't have worked. Oh, no, not at all. You know, none of this, none of this would have worked. And it, it went on for a long time. So, you know, this, uh, the, the man had charisma. He, he knew how to, he knew how to read his lines, but he also had comedic timing. Mm -hmm. I think that's why people are so, I mean, listen, the main reason why people are hurt by this is because if you believe that OJ killed somebody, then this is, this is horrible. 
you know, but the thing with him, man, once, 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 it, once it did happen, and once he was acquitted, you know, it was, it was, it was hard because him being a hero to people, you know, even, even some of the biggest fans, we knew he did it. I mean, even beyond here, he was a sports icon. Like mm -hmm. no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, and that's the other thing. I mean, the man was a sports icon. He was, you know, a lot of people who are older than me, they grew up with OJ, you know, looking at him play and when he played for the Buffalo Bills. And, you know, it's just even the most hardened fans, even the biggest fans, they just, you know, you, whether you want to admit it or not, you knew he did it. <laughs> Everybody knew he did it. But, and, that, and that's the thing that people want to use against black people because they expected black people to stand up and protect OJ. Now, I'm going to tell you something. There's all kind of people who are standing up and protecting OJ are they uh, uh you know they don't they don't care what he did all they want to do is be close to somebody who's famous you know and that, that includes black and white all mm -hmm. right so don't try to put this shit that black people like OJ was our god and we <laughs> know and we protected him you know uh, uh we you know we just kissed his ass no matter what he did no fuck that that never happened every everybody knew that OJ did it you know I'm, I'm using that loosely but you know there was everybody knew it to the point that everybody was making jokes about it and yeah, you know, it's kind of, I don't know, some people can see it as insensitive as to making jokes, but the jokes were, they weren't trying to take away from the, uh, you know, the, the alleged uh, murders that were done. People were, people were making jokes because they were saying, come on, let's drop the bullshit. We all know that OJ, he committed those crimes. Forget the night OJ came by to sell his new instructional videotape. I didn't kill my wife, but if I did, here's how I do it. <laughs> You know, people, a lot of people out there saying, all right, let's just go ahead and use comedy as a way to just let it all out because nobody wants to say anything. Everybody's tiptoeing around this because it did divide the nation. But everybody said, let's go back and at least have a laugh in knowing that this son of a bitch did it. Now you lined up your halfback right behind your quarterback, putting a hole in the middle and a scene on the left. <laughs> That's a Saturday Night Live sketch where they run the play and the play spells out, I did it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what I was wondering. I was like, what is that, musical notes? <laughs> no, no, no. I see it now, yeah. Yeah, there it is. He thought it was digging balls or something. <laughs> No, I did it. I like the way you thought it was musical notes. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> what, what is it? I don't get it. What song is that? <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing about OJ. OJ could never, this is what made people think that he did it even more. OJ could never just lay low. You got acquitted of the crime. You know, uh, uh, you, you fled and didn't, didn't even pay the families the money that you got owed them. Got lucky as hell. <laughs> yeah. Just lay fucking low, man. I'm not... <laughs> God forbid, if I kill somebody and I was acquitted, I'd go somewhere and you wouldn't hear from my ass again. Never again. No, I'd drop all this shit and just rest on what laurels I have so far in my life. Me and this damn dog right here. <laughs> we, <laughs> me and this damn dog, we'd go back somewhere and lay low and y'all wouldn't hear from us again. <laughs> from double toasted to bread. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the, he could never do it, man. He could never. Th so, I don't know, man. I think OJ... He was just so addicted to being in that spotlight because he was so adored. Yeah. That's the sign of a true narcissist. A true narcissist doesn't know when to sit their ass down. And especially in a place like Vegas, you know, people are, you know, they're they're giving in to their urges, you know, yeah. that they keep secret. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Sin fucking city, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go to the slots, you go meet a hooker, and then you go hang out with OJ. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't hear from me again, but a narcissist doesn't know when to stop. No matter what's happening, they're still out there. You know, they, they don't know when to shut up because they, they're they addicted to that adoration, that spotlight. And that's the thing with him, man. He would put himself in, in positions. The man got off, I think, on people questioning him because it was a way for him to make light of the situation. It was a way for him to kind of wink and nod at the camera and be like, y'all know I did that shit. Like, you gave me this clip. Sasha Baron Cohen. Yeah. What was the show he was on? It was on This Is America. This Is America. Sasha Baron Cohen sat down and played a character where he started asking O.J., you know, trying to get him to confess. Yeah, after training with an FBI interrogator, yeah. he said. Now, okay, so O.J. might not know that that was Sasha Baron Cohen, but why are you there in the first fucking place? <laughs> you know people are going to ask you about this. Yeah. You know people are going to question you. You know people are going to press you, but he didn't care. All he knew was that there was some rich Italian guy who wanted to hang out with him. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then they got him. Yeah. We bought, uh, how you say, a lady killers. Simpson party with. <laughs> Damn. Ah, oh, la, 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 la. You see, man, he's over here laughing. Yeah. He's having a good time with this. That is not normal behavior. So if you, you know, if I had any doubts about OJ, this would be the shit that would make me say, nah, man, you did something because I would not be sitting up here smiling and having a good time with this. You know, I would not even be there. I wouldn't, I would be gone. If you ask me to get on camera, you're gonna, and I know you're gonna question me about this crazy shit, no. No. Yeah, he's trying to be like, no, come on, I didn't do that. It's like, get the fuck out of here, mister. I wrote a book about how I would do it. Yeah. If I had to come out there, I wouldn't be doing this shit where I'm crying and putting on theatrics, but I'll be telling people, hey, if I'm going to be out here, I'm going to let you know I didn't do this, okay? I'm not going to joke around. I'm not going to play with this. I would be out there. If I had to be out there, it would be trying to convince people that I'm innocent. But you know what? He, you know why he's not trying to convince people that he's innocent? Because he's not. He don't give a fuck. No. He doesn't care. This makes me think, I bet you he did a lot of private events. Like, for a lot of old dudes who loved football, they're like, man, come have a beer with me, you know, OJ. I oh. want to tell you about the old days. Oh, yeah. No, he, man, I, I know. I know that he had young women, young white women coming over all the time, you know, having sex with him. I know that he, he you know, he still... That's why he loved the adoration, because he still wanted those perks of it. He still wanted to get laid by young, hot white girls. He still wanted to be, you know, hang around uh, 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 people of privilege. Mm -hmm. You know, he still wanted to be looked at as a hero. This, this motherfucker is so crazy that, you know, that comedic timing that we're talking about, this whole comedy aspect of him, it, he was so good at it, he couldn't even stop doing that. <laughs> and he couldn't give up that lifestyle either. No. He, so he had this, uh, I don't know if you knew about this, because we talked about it on the show before, this fool, not only was he out there doing interviews and laughing about you know this whole situation of him being accused of murder, but he also did a reality show. He did a prank reality show called Juiced. Really? I'm not, would I bullshit you on no, that? No, but I didn't know that. He I'm... did a whole thing, and he, I mean... He did this show where he would dress up as different people dressed up in he would dress up in costumes and he would come out and and uh and he would tell people like he he would try to sell people a a a, a bronco so it was it was like his version of punk a and, punk and this was after the trial and it was called juice so he would try to sell somebody a white bronco <sighs> Jesus. and then I think they even tell him like it, it's from OJ or he would or he would come out as the car salesman and then he'd be like ha, 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 I'm just playing you got juiced the TV show you have been juiced look and he's trying to fuck this girl look at that look, he's trying to have sex with this girl got his arms around and everything I'll fucking kill you don't come with me it's even got the same fucking font as punk too. yeah it does <laughs> yes. He had an opener for the show. They had women with the titties all out and everything, and he and he rapped. Oh my god! And they showed him doing all the different costumes. He had a he had his own little person that he was doing stuff with. It's this is crazy, man. So he would sit down, wrote a rap song, and it sounded like a rap song that an old dude would uh, rap anyway. You know, trying to use all the modern slang. All oh, you sucker MCs, you better watch out. Your OG's coming, and you're gonna scream and shout when I slit your throat. <laughs> I am the goat. You know, it's. It was some, I, no, I'm, that's not how the rhyme went, but it's, I'm it's, sure it's worse. It's, it's much worse. I'm surprised he didn't have fucking gold teeth in his mouth. Jesus. Yeah, man. Looks like a jackass. I hope, uh, I hope I didn't catch those titties on there. I mean, they look nice, <laughs> but I think I cut it before it happened. Yeah, here he is out there, uh, here he is out there juicing people. Shot at him. Jesus, man, just horrible yeah. representation. This is him in different costumes and whatnot. Like he's at a drive-through, and then when people would say, "What the hell is going on?" He'd come out and rip the costume off, and, and people are like, oh, "Fuck is OJ?" And he's like, oh, "You got, <laughs> you got juice on." No, oh. you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's 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 stupid, man. It's crazy making noises. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, the man was, you know, it was crazy, man. And again, just you know, he was constantly making a mockery of this case, of these murders. I've never personally shaken hands with a murderer. Yeah, it's good to see you. Thank you. Very nice meeting you. Huh? <laughs> like, I'm still trying to figure out if, that, if this interview was set up by him. 
I don't even know what to say to that. Like that is that that's like when Cosby came out going, hey, hey, hey. It's like, will you fucking stop it already? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you look at the way he's looking at the camera. This is what I'm talking about. Always winking and nodding at the camera. Always uh sitting back and saying, you know, what it looks to me like he's saying, you know, hey, hey, yeah, hey, 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 y'all, you know I did this. I'm so wacky. You know, y'all know I did this shit. Come on now. Let's stop bullshit. <laughs> you know, I I yeah, I, 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 it's hard for me to figure out what's performance art with, with, is with him, and when things are real, he got so crazy with all this stuff, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's performance art. Put him in a fucking gallery. During the time that this trial was going on, and that was like '94, I believe we all said. You know, I was, like I said, I was around at the time, man, and uh, it was crazy because of the conditions that I had. But everybody knows about uh, the trial with OJ. You know the 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 bloody gloves. Uh, uh, you know the whole the whole thing with Johnny Cochran, the thing that became a pretty much a a catchphrase. And some of you remember this, even if you weren't the, around at the time. This catchphrase became so popular, and I think I have the clip of it. I might not, but I think I do. And I said to myself. Maybe I can demonstrate this graphically. I'm gonna show you something. This is a nit and that's Johnny Cochran. Mm -hmm. Johnny Cochran became famous and infamous for this trial. Some people are saying, "How could you do this?" Some people are saying, "Well, he's a lawyer and he's just doing his job." You know, I don't know. I still don't know how I feel about it. But I know he became so famous from this trial that just the, the image of Johnny Cochran became, you know, an image for black lawyers on different shows. Oh my like God! It was a meme before memes were a thing on South Park. Oh yeah, and he was also like the like his, you know, the. the uh, this type of lawyer was seen like on uh, uh, Seinfeld <laughs> and shows like that. Yeah, Johnny Cochran became sort of a celebrity himself behind this. It doesn't fit. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. <laughs> that became, that became uh, a catchphrase that is still lasting today. Everybody remembers that. Yeah, the but, glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you something, man. I'm not sitting up here defending the morals of... Johnny Cochran, I'm not sitting up here trying to say anything. I'm just saying, God damn, the man was great as, at his job. He was good. Even though, like, listen to him now, I'm like, uh, see anyone two blocks away. It's like, I don't know who the fuck that is. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, at the time, you know, it worked. This it, Johnny Cochran was, somebody in the chat said he was a master. Yeah, I mean, the guy was, he was amazing at his job. Oh, yeah. That was crazy how good he, had, he was at his job, man. But... The thing that happened with this is that the reason why this divided the nation so much is because it brought up the whole issue of the justice system and racism. Mm -hmm. You know, even with those bloody gloves, racism was brought into question because a lot of people believe that, uh, oh, what's, what's his name, Mark Furman, you know, this was uh, the uh, investigator on the case. They believe that he planted the glove. Now, wow. Now, some people say he did and some people didn't. He has, if I recall correctly, uh, uh, Mark Furman, he had a history of racism. Dropping the N-word and uh, some other things. And so it brought into doubt what he did with this case. And that's what divided the nation here because... I'm going to tell you, it's, it was an odd thing because the justice system have, has gotten by on, on poor uh, and minorities, especially black people, for years. You know, we have seen people get away with murder. We have talked about police brutality, police murder, the murdering of black, of black people, you know, black men, you know, and, all, and, and no one listened. People got away with murder. So when this trial came up, people were saying, I'm not saying it's right what he did. But all these white people who were mad at uh, O.J. Simpson, it was like, man, you know, now you're seeing what it's like from our point of view. We're not saying it's right. Mm -hmm. No one's condoning this. No one's happy that anyone was murdered. But, you know, it was this whole divide of, like, you're getting a taste of what it's like now. You're seeing this big trial where you're seeing a black man get, uh, get, get, get away with murder. And, yes, a lot of people bringing race into it. Well, yeah, uh, you can't help but do it. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people were saying... You know, for those who are getting so upset over this high-profile case right here, and some of you who are bringing your own racist bi biases to it, uh, 
where were you when we were talking about the justice system when we were dying and dying and dying and dying and just they even died but just getting fucked over for years. Yeah. And now you see how it is. And it just made it uncomfortable for people because, you know, they, <laughs> you just had to see that I, I worked at a studio at the time. I was the only black person there. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact, as much as those people might have said they were my friends, they liked me or whatever, they, and I knew how this was. This is how I know that they were upset because I saw a couple of those people just look at me with disappointment. Just assuming, like, you're happy about this, aren't you? <laughs> Why I, would I, you I know be this. happy? I know, I know, but they were just kind of like, I, you know, looking at me with just question, like, so are you satisfied? Are you happy that, you know, this person got off? I don't know if you are, but how do, you know, I don't know how I feel about you right now. <laughs> you know, I get, and it was, and you could just see that, and you could just see the disappointment of people thinking, like, also, it was just a weird thing. I was looking at these people walk in and, like, oh, the justice system. I'm like, yeah. You know, not I even I had to say it. I just I didn't say anything out loud, but I was like, yeah, you fucking get it now. You know how it is. Yeah. You know, you, I mean, I don't I, it, a lot of people who were white looked at Mark Furman and they're like, why would he do that? How could he get away with that? And black people are like, well, it's been happening for years. Yeah. I don't know. I he could have. Maybe he didn't, but I believe it. Mm -hmm. I believe he I believe he could. There was just a case uh not too long ago. In, I believe it was Tallahassee, Florida, a woman planted, a, pol a woman police officer planted alcohol on a black man, and it's on camera. And, gotcha. the, and the police department said, we don't see any wrongdoing. Wow. So fuck yeah, people could believe that this could happen. While other people are like, how can anybody you know, do something on a big scale like this and corrupt justice. I'm like, it's done all the fucking time. Yeah, man. the system's corrupt. I mean, I heard you this week talking to Oz, I think, about the prison systems, how it's all privatized. It's modern day slavery. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it, 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 you'd be surprised at how if the police really want to turn a blind eye to something, a lot of times they can. So a lot of people, that, 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 that's why this divided the country so much on a, you know, racially. Because a lot of people are like, yeah, the system's always been corrupt. It's been corrupt against poor. It's been corrupt against black. In fact, that's why Ho that's why OJ got away with it. If OJ didn't have money, they would have got his black ass too. Imagine if he was white. We would have seen him show up again in movies. He would have had an easier time making a <laughs> comeback, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe not, but I can see what you're saying. <laughs> Juiced would have had several seasons. I know it would not. <laughs> no, right? no, no, hell no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The dude jumping out and scaring people, <laughs> punking people. You know, no, I, <laughs> nah, you know, and I, it's, it was just a really uncomfortable moment at that time. And I was hoping that it would open up a dialogue, but as usual, people just, and it did. It did open up a dialogue. Temporarily, right? Temporarily. You know, I mean, you know, uh, a lot of people are just kind of like, look, look at what happened with Rodney King. He got his ass beat. It was on camera. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, the police got away with it until until people had to go out and start rioting and going crazy. And then that's when y'all decide to do something. You know, so, yeah, we see it all the time. We saw it on fucking national news on the on, on you know, on, on, uh, on camera where they beat this guy down. Clear as day, clear as day where this guy could not defend himself. Almost beat this man to death, and yet they got away with it. So fuck yeah, people are like you know I don't like what OJ did. I don't approve of what he did. I don't condone what he did. But fuck man, you know now you know how it feels. Yeah, this what happened with OJ speaks to just one of the levels of how corrupt and broken the system is. Yeah, no, it's, it was no, it's it's you know, it's, and 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 thing is, if you don't experience it, then people just kind of, we do this all the time. We stay within our own circles and we just don't have any empathy for anybody else. I was hoping that OJ would, would open would open up that dialogue, and it did, and it did in a way, but I mean, as, as, as we can see, uh, small, small steps were taken to prove things, you know. it's uh, it, was, it was an eye-opener, you know, for people out there. And that's him trying on the glove right there and uh, saying that, you know, these were planted. These were not mine. I don't know if I can tell you that it was or not, but I can tell you for sure that, uh, you know, a lot of people were saying, I can see how it happens. Yeah, I could see that. But, you know, I also know that if I was going to kill someone, I wouldn't be worried. Man, do these gloves fit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of people don't realize uh, OJ went back to jail. Did you know this? No. Yeah, this is another thing where, again, not 
not sitting up here trying to defend OJ. I'm just saying, you know, you got to understand how people feel about how corrupt the justice system is. People who defended the justice system when it never affected them, now you see how other people feel. You know, it was a crazy thing to see people just walk away and just be like, oh, well, you know, I, it's, it's the justice system. It's just, where's the justice? And like, yeah, we've been saying that for a long time. And yeah. the words of Richard Pryor, yeah, ain't no justice, it's just us. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, man, this is how, I, again, if you had any doubts about OJ, he just kept doing shit. He kept doing crazy stuff, man. So he went back to jail because in Las Vegas, where he was supposedly supposed to be retiring and you know not 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 causing a ruckus, he broke. What did he break into? Was it a casino, y'all? He broke into somewhere. Do you hear about this? I remember vaguely hearing about something like, did he break like some stand with like a collectible item in there or something? Yeah. So he did a robbery where he brought him and some goons in. <laughs> Seriously, man, he brought in like like he, he came in like a super villain. He came out uh, uh, like one of those diehard villains. He came in with a squad of goons and broke into uh, some something where this display where they had football memorabilia. Yeah, and he came in to take it, and he had to he had to, he had to serve time for that. OJ said it was all a scheme to get back his own personal memorabilia. I would have made a, a, a better judgment back then. Um, None of this would have happened. But judgment is not in your vocabulary, man. This is a year after his juice show, yeah. from juice to jail. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, the judgment is not, I mean, you, hell, you didn't even get judged at your murder case. You know, you got to quit it. So, <laughs> you know, judgment, good judgment is definitely not something you do. Uh, yeah, he had to go to jail, I believe. What, what, when was this, 2017? It said 2007, I think. Whoa. Two, whoa, shit, sorry. <laughs> Can't read those like you. Yeah. yeah, I forgot what it was. But yeah, he, he served time, and then he went on parole. Does anybody know how, how much time he had to serve? Because I, I don't remember how long he went to jail. But yeah, we, he, one of the biggest connections Simpsons had to Las Vegas when he first arrived in 2017. That's when a parole board granted him early release from prison after his conviction in an armed robbery case of a football memorabilia. So how long did he spend in jail? Probably just a couple months. Can't imagine he was there over a year. And even when he went to jail, was it like a nicer no, one? No, I think he was in jail for years, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, if that was 2007, and he was, he got out in 2017, that would be like oh, eight or nine years that he yeah, was in jail. Yeah, almost a decade. So he spent, a day, listen, somebody was going to make sure that he, if you, this is why I was saying, you know, if you can't lay low, man, shit, those white people gonna find a way to put his ass in jail one way or another. He yeah. did, how what did, nine years. The chat is saying, yeah, he did, he did uh, nine years, man. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, he did, he did nine years in jail. So they were gonna make him do some time at some point. That's why, you know, stay low. But they were gonna make sure, if you, if you wanna act a fool, we're gonna make sure you do some time at some point. Because if it probably wasn't OJ, they probably would have let his ass out early. Yeah. He had it coming for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody said revenge verdict. Yeah. Hell yeah. We're going to get his ass. And, and by the way, uh, I don't think a lot of people, black or white, were crying about it. No. They said, you know, as, as far as we're concerned, you can throw his ass in there and, and throw away the key. Yeah. As long as he's not making any more TV, we're all better off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go, y'all. That's our discussion on OJ right and, there. And his legacy lives on. Like I was telling you before we started, Beetlejuice is quoting him in the trailer. The juice is loose. The juice is loose. Yeah. Uh, well, there you go, y'all. Uh, again, this is not a celebration of the man. This is a celebration of his death, if anything. Because unless something comes out later that says OJ clearly did not do it, and I, and I, and the way life goes, I wouldn't be surprised if something like that came out later on. But for right now, I believe that this man... Personally, I believe he is a murderer. Personally, I do believe that he should have served time. He should have gone to, to, to jail for life. Uh, and, hey, you know, the world is better off without him as far as I'm concerned. May he rest in peace. Yes. <laughs>